people, Earth, I need to say something, listen to me. I hope every one of you behind the screens on this arena can feel this level of happiness just one time in your life. But guess what? You never feel this level of happiness if you don't go for something in your own life. When they knock you down, when they try and on you, when they talk about you, and they try to put their foot on your neck. If you stay down, you will never ever get that resolve. Fortify your mind and feel this level of happiness as you rise. Do you realize that you're a star? Yeah. I always yeah. knew so. I, I, I knew I wasn't going to be regular. I, I just knew like I was going to be great at something. I didn't know what it was, but I knew I was going to be great at something. I just knew. Even when I was working my, my last job, I just, I, I, I'm grateful for it because it showed me what I didn't want in life. I just knew this isn't for me. And what is that? Is that self-belief that gets you there? Or is that, so is it is it you believing that you're going to be great that got you there? Or is it because you were innately destined to be great? I'm trying to figure out if it's something mm, that one- What came first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah. Mm, there's levels. There's people like us, we're, we're crazy in the sense that we believe to be, it's almost delusional sometimes. Yes. You have, like, what's the one, I've heard this quote on the JRE before, it's like, greatness, and madness and next door neighbors and they just borrow each other's sugar once in a while. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So there's a point like, I've used the story of me when I used to drive this beat up Honda and I'd shift the the gear stick and I'd just do this. <laughs> I literally, it was madness. It was me preparing for having a sports car, paddle shifts. So I'd shift the you know, three, boom, gear four, boom. And when I dropped down, you know, same thing. Just like I was getting ready. I was, I was, this is, I, bro, I can manifest like a motherfucker. Do you believe in it, in, in the metaphysical, like, yep. sense you 100%, believe? 100%, 100%. Everything comes from the imagination. Everything comes from, the, like, the, before this microphone was a microphone, someone somehow thought about it. You know, how can I speak into something that would amplify my voice and blah, 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 blah. And then this came out of it and it's evolved over the years, but everything comes from the imagination. So the power of the mind, people don't understand. We still don't understand. I still don't understand how powerful it is. I'm still learning. Well, I know one thing is I can make things happen. I can go into levels, I just can't tell the world, but like there's levels that like, I've manifested things that I'm just like, I still shock myself like, how the fuck did I make that happen? And this is not even to do with fighting, this is to do with my personal life. And I'm like, I made that happen. And this is through this like manifesting subconsciously as well. Just years of something just manifesting, manifesting, and boom, it's right there. I'm just like, shit, I really made that happen. It's scary, man. It's scary for me to even think about. I re reflect on that and almost view it like getting in your car in the morning. When you get in the car in the morning, you set the sat nav, but then you've also got to drive. Mm -hmm. You've also got to go to training. Yeah. If you just set the sat nav, where are you going to be? Sitting in the car. Sitting in the fucking car. Yeah, so you car. can sit there and make all these dreams and manifest, but yeah. you have to work. And what happens if you just drive? Work. If you drive... And with no sat-nav? You don't know where you're going. You're lost, you know what I mean? You have no direction. So for me, I felt like both of them together, mm -hmm. right, when, you, when you really, when you have the vision and you're able to manifest, but then you also put the work in, magic happens, man. Magic. That's where the magic is, but a lot of people never get there, unfortunately. A lot of people... Don't. We're blessed that we can dream. Amen. We're blessed that we can dream. That's one thing I've realized. Because a lot of people, even from the impoverished parts of London, would be would be lucky to have my old job. You know, from where I'm from, from Nigeria, a lot of people would be blessed to have my old job, and they'll be like, "Yo, this is I have a great job. I can send money back home. This and that." But yeah, I just had bigger dreams. I just knew what I wanted. So I feel like I'm spoiled that I can I can dream the way I I do and I can manifest the way I do. So. I never take it for granted and I realize the position that I'm in. I'm privileged. I'm very privileged. I read a quote about about immigrants specifically from Nigeria and it said yeah. our parents' role was to try and figure out survival mm. and we're here sat blessed with the task of self-actualization, which wow. is like figuring out meaning. Yeah. And they said, what a beautiful thing that is. Yeah. And They're just trying to survive or find a way to the next way to thrive. And to educate you. To see like, yeah. What's meaning and purpose? Exactly. I, um, I did my walkout, I practiced it before I, I, I went out to fight. So I went there to watch my teammates fight early on. And while the arena was empty, they were setting up. I was like, I want to practice my walkout. So I walked in the arena and I visualized everything. I visualized the people, the security. 
the fans, for visualize just everything, the camera crew, because they were there setting up as well. And that made me get comfortable. So that way, when I have to go out into the arena, I'm not spooked. I did it the same thing when I fought Robert the first time. Before I did the dance, I practiced that dance the night before. But you gotta be spooked. You're not scared of fighting. You should oh, yeah. fight. Nervous, nervous. I, I like <laughs> yeah, a little bit of nerves. Nervous, yeah. it's, it's, good it's, it's, it's good fire. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's yeah. good emotion. But I wanted to be comfortable in the arena. You know what I mean? Comfortable in the space. So that really helped. But I came here with my crew and we rehearsed uh, the entrance. And I did it probably about four times or five times. And I did the whole walkout and I visualized everything. And I did the whole prep point thing. And I stepped in the cage and I claimed the space. And I did that about four or five times. And I also did the win, the victory, like just visualizing it. And I imagined the whole place lit up with people and loud cheerings and boos and people by the side, what they're saying to you and just practicing it. And amazingly, when I got to the prep point again before the walkout, it just felt even more deja. There's levels to this shit, man. It just felt like, man, I just did this shit yesterday, which I did. So I was so relaxed. You saw me doing the Carlton when he, when, his, when he was coming out. That was a nice song. I like that track. I was relaxed and I could just see he was too tense. But some people like to be that way when they fight. That's cool. I just like to flow. I like to have fun with it. I mean, a lot of people, this is their goal. Mm -hmm. They're like, I want to become the UFC champion. They get it done. And then what happens after in their next fight, they lose it. Or right. they lose sight tr track of what really matters. It's, it's harder to stay champ than it is to be champ. This is pe most people's like, they've clocked the game. And then you see a lot of people just fall off after this. Then they, they don't have that because they've done it. They've done what they wanted to do, what they set out to do. I've done one thing that I set out to do, which is become the UFC champion. Now it's about defending that actively, not like fight twice a year. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people will just expect, it's, it's, it's different. I, I'm, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna run my own legacy. Not like anyone else or compared to anyone else. I'm gonna run my own legacy and, and what are you gonna carve my own way? But I know for a fact, I'm the best in the world. I've, proved, I've said this before over and over and over and over again until it's just tiring. I said it before I even got in the UFC. I feel like the best. I know I'm the best, but no one's listening and I didn't care. Fuck the rest. I just had to do me. So, again, what are they going to say now? Wait till he fights. Meh, 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 meh. Wait till he fights. Oh, nah, nah, nah. And go on their fucking phones and talk shit. And some of you might as well. But, hey, guess what? I'm proving myself right. I don't have to prove you wrong. I'm proving myself right every fucking time. Thing is, I, my, my brain wants to move forward. Because I did it in kickboxing because I was undefeated for so long. So it was always like, all right, cool, what's next? I'll watch the fight maybe once, study it, all right, what's next? But now I have to like chill, relax, look at the tape, look at what you've done, and then soak it in, smell the roses for a little bit, and then move on. Because once I had my first loss, I, I took winning for granted because it was just a habit. I was always winning, always winning, always winning. So now I have to like, when you win, when you do something amazing, like I did in Atlanta, like I did in Melbourne, just chill, smell the roses, and then move forward. Every time I've said something, I said, I'm the UFC middleweight champion from my UFC debut. You just don't know it yet. I did that from my UFC debut, and I did. My, before my, my UFC debut, I said I was going to fight Robert Whitaker for this belt in 2019, and I did. I said I'm going to beat John Jones 2021 Raider Stadium International Fight Week, and I will. Every single time I say something, I always find a way. There's a method to my madness. I put it out there in front of the world. So that way, I do everything in my power. My subconscious does everything in its power to make it happen. If not, then I have to eat my words. And I don't like doing that, you know? So I make them eat their words every single time. Well, to G myself up sometimes, if you ever feel, you know, down, sometimes you look at yourself and you give yourself positive affirmations. That was something I used to do every morning. Um, but also therapy, after my first UFC fight, like straight after I got home, I was like, hmm, I need to go see someone about this. Cause, no way, really? Yeah. I mean, like, think about it like coffee. You know, if you drink coffee, right, mm -hmm. you get a, a coffee high and then you crash. So it's like after my first UFC fight, UFC 221 in Perth, it was just a lot of stimulus, a lot of people coming at you. And then when I was finally home alone with my own thoughts, I was just... Like, it was like a crash. It was like, I was sad. And I was sad for like a week. And I was like, why am I sad? I just made my UFC debut in spectacular fashion, made mm -hmm. 50K bonus. Mm -hmm. and I realized this isn't really normal. So I sought the help that I needed to help me adjust to the life. And it wasn't until um, my fourth UFC fight that was in New York, MSG, mm -hmm. that 
I felt like after I got back, I was able to integrate back into like my own life properly without being in a low. I might say you, not everyone is mentally ill, but if you don't look after your mental health, mm -hmm. just like if you don't look after your physical health, right. you're going to get physically ill. So you have to be on top of it. Life is tough, man. So yeah, it's good to go through those kind of situations because and I tell those kids, don't worry, because a lot of them, they think this is how life is going to be forever. This is it. And I remember being that kid. So if I could, if I could go back and tell myself anything, just keep going, because eventually, you know, you, you don't, you're not going to peak in high school. They will. Mm. I go back to the, the town I, that, that I was at then, and I see a lot of them now. Because even in my brain, when I, when I think about those situations, I see them still as bigger than me. But when I go back, I'm towering over them. I like to be with my own thoughts. A lot of people don't like to be with their own thoughts because they don't like what's happening up here. But you have to face yourself so you can learn how to beat yourself in a way. So yeah, if I can conquer myself, I can conquer anyone. So yeah, this is a part of not just my training, but just life in general, learning how to just be alone with my own thoughts and enjoy my own company. Because yeah, I mean, how can you love someone if you don't love yourself? When they see me shining and they see how I'm working, they're like, I, you know why I recognize jealousy in other people? I used to be that guy. Yeah. I used to, I wouldn't say hate everyone, but there was one of my friends, I saw my Instagram the story, who I was jealous of because he was working in the mines, getting like 2,500 a week. And he was telling me, this is when I just moved to Auckland. He was telling me, come through, get some work. I'll, I'll look after, I'll make sure you get this job and get on the same pay as me. And after a while, I realized I stopped like, Walking with him or like texting him back, and I didn't realize I was like, Wait, why, why am I jealous? And I realized it's not, it's nothing to do with him. He's not taking anything it's away from you. me. Yeah. You know. So once I identify the most, I can kill it. And now when I see it in other people, it's so easy to smell. I remember, uh, for me, I just knew I had to go to that place, and that's what my coach said, go to that place, embrace the darkness, go numb. And I looked across the cage from him and I said, you'll never beat me, I'm willing to die. Like I was, and I meant that, like, if this is how I go out, this is how I go out. Hi. And I, I, dude, I put left foot down, I foot on the pedal, and even when I watch the fight again, when I watch the fight again, I get sweaty palms, my heart's racing, mm. I feel the emotions, and I was surprised, like, the pace I put after doing what I did for already what, 20 minutes, Pace I put on him in that fifth round, that's some shit that I don't want to toot my own horn, but man, that's legendary shit. And yeah. so the last style bender that's based on on what? It's based off uh, a TV show I, I watched, The Avatar. It's a Nickelodeon show. Okay. And Aang, the main character, he had to realize his destiny as the Avatar by mastering all the four elements, which is water, earth, fire, and air, mm -hmm. to realize his destiny. And for me, in this in this realm, I have to realize my destiny as the Avatar by mastering all the elements of the of martial arts. So a lot of stuff in that show is all kind of correlates with my life with different characters. So like they say what, rising tides lift our boats. Exactly. So right now after doing this, I can't wait to, I'm leaving uh, New York today, going back home. When I go home and I show my teammates this and they can see this, it's like the four minute mile. I heard um, within the first year when it was broken, four other people completed it. So now they can see this is real. That oh shit, and they oh. know me. They know I'm a, I'm a piece of shit. Like a lot of times, I'm, I, you know, I fuck up. You know, I'm late. I show up. I, I work. Don't get me wrong, but like I, uh, I'm like Naruto. I'm a very uh, eclectic student. Mm. But then for me to have this, they'll be like, man, if he can get that, then I can step my game up as well. So I'm hoping I just inspire my team to yeah. Let's get this.